the wonderful world of knots. Let's check it out. Hello, welcome back to the Bugout channel. Thanks for taking the time out to uh, click on the, the videos and checking it out. I'm down in the woods at the parachute shelter and um, after a few storms, I need to tie it down. You know, not everywhere, just a few bits and bobs. So I thought, since I'm tying it down, tying a few knots, why don't I show you the wonderful world of knots, isn't it? According to me, anyway. Yes, it's a very exciting subject, I know. Now, if you're out camping, you're tying your tent down on you. If you're wild camping, using a basher, again, you're tying your shelter down. It could be any number of reasons. So, what knots do you use? What are the best knots to use? And how do you tie them? Now, there are hundreds and thousands of knots out there, all different ways of tying them, different uses. But I stick to half a dozen or so knots, some I've learnt, you know, when I was a young lad in Cub Scouts, and I stick with them. You can learn new ones, obviously, but the knots I use, they usually cover all bases. So here are my seven, I got seven, top knots that I always use and how to tie them. Very exciting, I know. Let's check it out. Right, here we are at the parachute, a, a very wet parachute, it's a bit wet today. There's a job it needs doing. So I've got to tie the parachute back down, right? But there's no way you're fixing the line, paracord, to the parachute. What it is, I cut the bottom off because it's too big. So all the loops have gone. So what I do, obviously there's no way you're attaching the rope to this without cutting it. I use a toggle. And not just any old toggle but a golf ball. So I put that underneath the parachute, or it could be a tarp, anything like that. Give it a twist. So it's like that. Now I've got to attach a rope to this and then put it to a peg on the ground. So what I'm going to do is tie a knot on this end of the paracord, slip it around there, pull it tight, and it should constrict or tighten up around the golf ball or underneath the golf ball on the top. Now I can hear you saying, oh, how do you do that? It sounds fascinating. Well, it is. Now this knot I've been using for years and years, and I don't even know what it's called. I call it an overhand slip knot, but yeah, I don't really know the real name of it. If you do, put it in the comments below. I'd be interested to find out. I never really looked into it. But all it is, form a loop. So you can pinch it there, look. So it's over the top of this part of the rope, or paracord, whatever you want to use. Around the back, pinch it there, and you can see there's another loop there, isn't it? That goes inside that one. Yeah, and pull. So it's like an overhand knot, but over top of this rope. That allow you then to, when you pull this, the loop gets tighter and tighter and constricts. But that should then go around my uh, golf ball. Right, we'll put that on the golf ball now. So you can use this on any top if you haven't got any clips or, or the eyelets are pulled out. Put your toggle, could be a, a piece of wood or it could be a pebble, nothing too sharp, obviously. Give it a twist. Now you've got your loop, what I call the overhand slip knot on it. Put it over the top and pull. Now you can pull as tight as you want. Obviously, the harder you pull that, the tighter that gets, isn't it? Now for a bit of added extra, I just form a loop, like that, look, around my hand, slip it over top of the golf ball, and pull again. I can do that as many times as I want. Okay, I can use that now to pull my tarp or parachute down. Simple as that. So that's knot number one of my uh, top seven knots that I use. How exciting. Right, let's go have a look at number two. Now, excuse me if I get the terminology wrong, the old ropes tie-in and all that. I'm not some sort of knot nerd, but uh, like I say, I, I got half a dozen or so knots I use, and I stick with them. Right, so now we've got the, the tarp attached, using that slip knot around the golf ball. We've got to anchor it to the ground, haven't we? So I've got a peg in the ground here. 
and attach it to the peg is something you could use all the time, especially camping, using tops, and that's a taut line hitch. So how do you tie that? Well, I'm going to show you now. Right, so here's your line. Here's the peg. Just put that in. Put your line around the peg. Now, if you can't see this, don't worry, I'll do a bit of a close-up in a minute. But taut line hitch, it's really easy. So here's your line that you want to tie down. So there's your working end. Pass them underneath the line you want to tie down. I hold it with my fingers, so I form that bit of a, a loop, yeah? So here's your tail end, working end. Goes inside that loop once, twice. Now the third time, you want to go above this loop, but uh, still around this line, yeah? So around the line, or over top the line. And you see there's a little bit of a loop here, and then past the tail end underneath that loop. Pull down. Don't worry, I'll show you in a close up in a minute. What you should end up with, I'll slide that down, it's almost something like people have described as a, a fist. Yeah, so you've got the three lines here. So, what this allows you to do is to pull tension. So, you can pull that line now as tight as you want, as long as this is done right. There we go. It won't slip down. It will slip down if you move it. You can move it down, move it up. But under tension, it stays there. So you'll see on your tents, on your guidelines, you'll have a little grommet on there. It does exactly the same job. But for whatever reason that breaks, obviously you can just tie your own, can't you? So pull your line, pull that tight. There we go. And that just holds. What I do is just tie it off in a few times, just to be sure in it. That's it. Taut line hitch. I'll show you again close up. Oh, I can get off the ground. Ah. So here's your line. See, it's around a tree at the moment, but it could be a tent peg or anything. So the tail end, the working end, underneath the, your line, inside there once, twice, around the back of your line, and then through the loop. So put as much tension on that as you want, it won't go anywhere. But loosen the tension off, you can slide this back and forth. Off. Thought line hitch. So knot number three, it's a knot I learned a few years ago while doing a, a bushcraft instructor's course. And I thought that's a good knot to learn and it's stuck with me ever since. And that's a Siberian hitch. Now the Siberian hitch is a great knot for ridge lines or just securing uh, your rope around a tree or an object. Um, it's got two really good things about it. One being quick release, so once it's tied, one good pull, and it's undone and away to go. The second being that you can tie it even with gloves on or mittens. Obviously out in Siberia it's very cold, isn't it? And they're always wearing mittens and gloves. So yeah, you can even tie it even with your, your mittens on. I have done a video on it before, there, but I'll show you again. So let's take a look at it. Your working end tail end, I, I don't know what you want to call it really, but I always call it the tail end. Okay, and then you've got your line, All right? This is gonna be your ridge line. So you've got both together in your hands. Hold this one with your thumb. That's your thumb there on your hand, isn't it? And you've got your working end, tail end on your hand. Make sure you've got enough length to play with. Bloody hell. All right, so this tail end, once it's in your hand there, you wanna wrap it around your hand again. Right? We've got three lines in, you know. We've got the ridge line, this, your working end, and again, the working end or the tail end. Once you've got that, I pinch these two the earlock, just to make, make life easier. Right? And then you want to move your hand away from yourself, like that, so it's pointing back towards the tree, and over top of the lines. See again? Here's the three lines, not the three lions, three lines. Pinch M2, move your hand away and over the loop. Alright? Now your hand is inside the loop now, isn't it? 
you see. So we'll reach down and grab your tail end and pull that through the loop. I'll show you again in a minute. Right, so you have that knot then. So there's another little constrictor knot, I suppose you call it. You can pull that as much as you want. There we are, see? Pull that as much as you want now. That knot's not going anywhere. It's got a bit of a loop there. Now for added security, you could use a toggle stick. But it's not there's not really any need. What's so special about that knot? I can easily tie an overhand loop here or bowline or something. Well this one's quick release, like I say. You get this line, pull it, and it's away, isn't it? So if you've got to bug out pretty quick, it's easy peasy, isn't it? Right, I'll just chuck this from the tree and we'll show you again. Hello. So you've got your two lines, you've got your ridge line and your working end, both in your hand. Wrap the working end around your hand and then pinch these two at the bottom. So your ridge line is under your thumb. Now, while pinching these two, move your hand away from you and over the top. Yeah? You've got a loop then, haven't you? Your hand's inside the loop. Leave it there. So you want to reach down and get the working end. Not the ridge line, but the working end. Once you've got the working end, just pull that through your little loop. Not all the way through. And just tidy it up. Tighten it up. Get it nice and tight. So what you've basically got then is your working end, a loop like that. Now let's say if you wanted some extra security, you can put a toggle stick through that. Pull that nice and tight. The toggle stick is there. Now you pull the ridge line. That's what's going on the tree, right? That's not coming undone. So when you do want to undo it, you've got a toggle stick, take them out. You just pull that loop and it all comes apart. Clear as mud. I'll just show you again quickly. I know it's pretty boring, I know, but uh, here we go. You've got your ridge line, this one, held by my thumb, your working end, on top of your hand, round again, pinch it to at the bottom, hand away from you, over the top, grab your working end, not the ridge line, pull through the loop, nice and tight. That's it. Tighten that up now. Bob's on the gym. When you've got a bug out, pull your working end and it comes undone. Look at that, easy peasy. Right, I'm going to tie that once more because I'm going to take the line over to the other tree and I'm going to show you another knot over there. How exciting. Right. Let's go. Right, so we're on knot number four now, is it? Yeah, number four of my uh, top seven knots that I like to use. Now I'm going to show you another hitch knot, which is a trucker's hitch. Oh, the way I tie a trucker's hitch. There's loads of different ways of tying a trucker's hitch. This is the way I was taught uh, years ago on the building trade when you're tying tack down on the on the trucks, hence trucker's hitch. Um, so yeah, and I've always stuck with this method. Right, so here we have our ridge line. It obviously goes from tree to tree. Now you could use this for obviously tarp or some sort of shelter, isn't it? Even a washing line. So you want to get tension on this on this line. So I use a trucker's hitch. There are other knots you can use to get tension, but trucker's hitch is a, a favourite. Now trucker's hitch, like many other knots, there's several ways of tying it. And whatever way you tie it, as long as it works, it's okay, isn't it? So the way I do it, I've got your ridge line. I grab it on the hand like that, a bit awkward I know, but when you twist your hand, you form a loop. You can see that. Come bit this, this way a bit more. So grab it like that, twist, and you've got a loop. See that? Now some people will grab the line from underneath and pull that through the loop. And you've got a slip knot. Yeah, then you can feed your line through that. You've got to pull all your line through, is it? Then you can pull on that slip knot then to tension your line. Like that. 
then obviously tie it off. I don't do that. I say there's nothing wrong with doing that, just not the way I do it. I've even seen people who've got make a loop in the line, tie an overhand knot, like so, and then use that, pull your line through to get your, your trucker set, your, your tension. But I think that's a moronic way of doing it, because the more tension you put on that, the tighter this knot gets, and um, yeah, you've ruined your rope, because you never get that knot untied. At least with the slip knot, if you do use that method, it's easy to untie. So the method I use doesn't need any knots to be un undo. So again, grab the rope, hello, make a twist, and you've got your loop. Just put your hand through the loop, so use your working end, tail end, chuck that over the top of your rope. Or your line, I should say, your ridge line. So once you've got your tail end over the top of the rope, just like so, what I tend to do is just pinch it with my fingers. What's in the loop, right? Just to stop it. But you see, that's gone over the top of this ridge line. Now you want to get your ridge line and pass it to your fingers, what's inside the loop. Can I make it a bit easier? There we are. All right. I'll move the camera around so to make it easier to see in a minute. Then you just pass that ridge line through your loop and then pull your working end. And look at that, you can pull that as much as you want. Right? That ain't going anywhere. The beauty of this is there's no knots. Yeah? Quick release, isn't it? I'll move the camera around, you can see it again. Was well, a better angle, isn't it? So you pass the line around the tree. This is your ridge line. Grab it like that, twist. And you've got yourself a little loop, haven't you? Then you've got your working end, or your tail end, right? Which is obviously around the tree. Now I just pinch with my fingers like that and make sure all this is over top of your, your ridge line. Ba -ba -ba -ba. There you go. So once you've thrown your tail end over top of your ridge line, you can hold it with your fingers if you want. Get your ridge line in and pass it to your fingers like this, look. Right? There's your. Right, so there's your tail end, right? Poke that through your loop, like that, and pull on your tail end. Look at that. Just move the camera as we pull. And pull on that as much as you want. So once you've got enough tension on it, you just got to tie this end off, right? To do that, just grab a little length of it and make an overhand knot. Tie that off there, pull that through. There. Okay, you can do that again if you want, just to be sure. So overhand knot just goes over the line, isn't it? Makes a little bit of a loop and then pull through. Do another one. So that's my trucker's itch, the way I always show. Should we have a look at it again? This time I've got my working end, or the tail end, or the end of your rope, whatever you want to call it, and I'll already chuck it over the top of my ridge line, right? I'll put my hand here, stop it sliding the way back. Then in front of this, I'll grab the ridge line, make a twist, and a loop. Let's get my hand in there so you can see it. Hand is still here, stopping this tail end going back. And now where this hand is, I just pass this ridge line through my loop and pull the tail end. Look at that. See? Easy peasy, isn't it? Right? Don't have to tie any knots, really. All you're doing is twisting to make a loop and passing the rope through it, and then pulling that. Pull. Over and through. Tie it off. Easy peasy. Right, so now we've done a trucker's hitch, quick release. Trucker's hitch on that end, quick release. Now, the perfect thing to show you on this now is another knot. Use on your ridge line. You can use this for attaching your tarp, attaching clothing, attaching 
lights, anything you want. And what knot is that? It's the Prusik knot. Let's have a look at it. You've probably seen loads of videos on these. Again, a great knot for camping or hammock camping, tarp, whatever you want. So in my little cordage bag, there we are. A little loop like that. So there's a little loop of bank line. See, I've tied two ends together, which I'll show you in a minute how I do that. Right, if you can bear the excitement. Again, we're back your line, put the one end down, and then through itself, through itself, okay, and then do the same again. Right, so we're doing it twice. Make sure it's nice and tidy. So you got your little loop, put it behind your line, put the top end down, just bear in mind this is the way I do it, right, it might be wrong but this is the way I do it. Then put your one loop through the bottom, like this, through this bit of the loop, right, don't pull it too tight, then go round the line again and do the same again. Really little loop, then you can pull tight. So it should look like something like that, right? The knot really wants to be on the, out the way, but all you got to bear in mind, you got to make sure everything's lined up nice and tidy. There's no crossing over the lines. Now, what do you want to use this for? Now, believe it or not, rock climbers use this for climbing up ropes. You wouldn't think so because look at it, it just moves back and forth, doesn't it? Right, but if you do it under tension, it stays there. You cannot pull it, yeah? Now so take the tension away and it'll slide back and forth again. Right, so in regards of a ridge line, what could you use it for? One good reason you could use it for. Just showed you the trucker's itch. If it wasn't very handy in making a loop, you put a prusik knot on it, put your rope through it. Then you can use your Prusik knot to add tension to your rope. Yeah, you see that's not going anywhere, is it? Pull that again. Right, then you can just obviously tie this end off. See that? That's got it well and truly, isn't it? it hasn't slipped at all. Now you take the tension away and you can slide it back and forth again. You've got your basher or tarp and you want to hang it on this ridge line. You got a plastic knot. Wait, oh, how do I get that on there? How do I tie that on there? Right, I'll show you. Get yourself a toggle. Pass that through your loop block. Get a toggle stick. Make sure it's pretty tidy, isn't it? See, that's on there now. Now you can move your tarp along to this nice and tight. Yeah, and just move that along. Now ideally the plastic knot wants to be smaller than the ridge line, whatever rope you're attaching it to, right? Otherwise it won't bind tight. Now if you want extra security, extra strength, when you've got your plastic knot, you loop and you pass it through once, twice, you can do it three times, right? No good at these little loops I got. So you'd have six lines up here, look, all nice and neat in a row. That'll give you extra um, strength then when it's binding. All right, so if you have got two similar size ropes, I do that, you know, three, four, five times as much as you want, right, until it's until you get enough um, strength on the, on the bind. So another use for this, you might be in your tarp, hammock, Whatever you want, you can hang all your stuff off it, can you? Yeah, in this case of light. You hang a bit of wet gear up or let's say your lights, hang your tarp up, whatever you want. I used it on my nature hide for hanging up all the, the camo net up so I can just move it out the way when needed. Just slide it along. So there's your loop. So put it behind the line, over the top, and then through itself like that, look. Right, and over the top again, and through itself again.
just making sure these all line up nice and tidy that's it but just like any other knot in it have a go and practice right so I say that will slide back and forth then under tension yeah rock solid right so there we are that's the Prusik knot it was number five in our top seven um, knots that I use now the next knot I'm going to show you is how I form this loop to make the Prusik how you join two ropes together right so you might want to make your own little loop for a Prusik knot so how do you join two ropes together well I always use well I use two methods really but my go-to is what I learned in the Cub Scouts many years ago right I don't know how many years ago now but yeah 40 years ago probably now and I'll never forget it okay and that's a reef knot you might have different names I don't know but easy to tie or two ends of the rope okay and the easy way to remember it is over under over under right pull tight that's a reef knot okay what I do with these then I cut these little ends off and melt them and then that's my little loop end for the, the prusik I'll just show you again but I'll find a couple of bigger bits of ropes so you can see easier right so we've got two ropes for whatever reason perhaps something snapped isn't it, it could be out in the in the wild somewhere something snapped or the rope's too short and you want to join two ropes together so these are two ends of the rope so I always use the ones in my right hand so that'll go over the rope yeah over that one over then under the rope then over the rope again and then under the rope all right so when you pull it, it looks like that look reef knot okay just do it again so this is the green rope over right so it's over so it's on top under you've got two tail ends again over then under pull right easy peasy quick and easy isn't it but it's a good knot to learn and it's easy to remember over under over under and pull reef knot I say it's uh, something I learned when I was very very small in the Cub Scouts I never forgot it and there was another knot I was taught in Cubs all them years ago and that's the bowline or bowling whatever you want to call it I always say bowline but it could be bowling and that's just forming the, a loop you can form loops in the end of your rope many different ways like the easiest one just the overhand isn't it yeah the easiest knot you can tie really isn't it you can pass this from the tree you can get your ridge line through there pass it all the way around tighten it instead of putting all your line through just put a bike through like that put your toggle stick on it pull that and you've got your your ridge line tied off again that's quick release isn't it the downside of using the overhand knot the form your loop when it gets more and more tension on that it's a bloody nightmare to untie, right? So you're better off with a bowline, or bowling. And I'll show you how you tie that now. This is the last one, so don't worry, it won't be long now. So the, the bowline, or bowling, right? To make a, the loop in your rope again. So at your tail end, then you've got your line. Just get your line and just twist to make a loop. See that, just a little loop. See it? That's all, just a bit of a twist. Then you've got this working end through the loop like so I'll do a close up in a minute around your line just like that and then back through the hole right if done correctly it should look something like that now we was always taught in the cubs to remember it you may have heard this before you got your little loop you formed in your in your line look that's the hole so the rabbit which is the end of your rope now goes through the hole up up through the hole okay from the back goes around the tree which is your line around the tree yeah and then back through the hole back down the hole so the rabbit comes up the hole around the tree and then back down the hole right that's your bow line right 
So that loop, it's not going to come undone. It won't constrict. But the good thing about this one, unlike the elbow hand knot, it's easy to untie. All right. To show you again, so form a loop. Then the rabbit goes up the hole. Then it goes around the tree. And then back through the hole. Line. So there we are guys, there's the knots I usually use when I'm out and about. Like I say I stick to them more or less all the time and they cover most things. Like I said before there's thousands and thousands of knots out there and you're not going to learn them all. And if you do struggle with tying knots or whatever, don't worry about it, okay. If you can't tie a knot, tie a lot, that's the saying. So just tie anything you want, just tie it plenty of times and it shouldn't come undone. Alright, so hope you're taking something out of it, hope you learned something. Um, if you haven't done so already, please think about liking, subscribing, hit this notification bell. And if you want to see some more videos, check that one out. And that one. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you again next time. All the best.